Welcome listeners, this is Caleb Key, and with me today is my longtime friend and fellow college student, Lucas Pruitt. So, Lucas, first of all, how is quarantine treating you? Um, Zoom classes have been a little rough the past few weeks, but overall I've, I've been having a lot of time to work on projects that I've been putting off. I just completed a project that I'd been working on since last summer, so it's given me a little more time to work on stuff like that. Well, I guess we'll just go ahead and get straight into it. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what your passion is. Yeah, so my name is Lucas Pruitt, and I am a sophomore at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, Um, and I'm majoring in media and journalism. My concentration specifically is photojournalism and multimedia, so I'm on the visual communications side of the major. I am passionate about filmmaking and storytelling and photography. What influenced you to pursue a career path with uh, multimedia and journalism? Yeah, so whenever I was uh, young, my parents actually owned a video store. And it was kind of like a blockbuster, but it was called Magic Video. It was uh, a lot smaller. It wasn't a chain. Uh, We didn't have a local video store here. But I remember they had a little home theater in the back of the of the building. And I remember coming in after school every day and just watching movies while I was waiting for my parents to get off work. So I think I fell in love with movies and, and filmmaking uh, from a really young age. But what ultimately got me into it was in third grade, I was, I guess that would have been eight years old. I found my mom's camera in her closet and I took it out and just like played with it the rest of the day, just filming little clips of whatever I could find. What is your favorite part about doing this? Okay, yeah, so I would I would describe myself as a visual storyteller. So I I would hope whenever people look at my work, they, they think it's very story driven and that stories is the main focus of my work. And so at the risk of sounding cliche, I would say my favorite part of doing it is telling people's stories and and working with people that I think are really cool and really interesting and that hopefully I can share their story with other people, even though a lot of times I come across people and they think their lives are kind of mundane or just normal, but I think everyone has a unique story to tell, and I think that's a big part of what keeps me motivated. So at the risk of sounding cliche, I would just say my favorite part is meeting people. I have some people that I still talk to that I've worked on projects two years ago, and they did an amazing thing by allowing me into their life and allowing me to tell their story. One thing I'll say that's really interesting that I've learned is that um, whenever you're asking someone if you can come into their life and tell the story, you kind of got to realize what you're asking of them. It's, it's a lot to ask to say, hey, can I, can I hang out with you for a few days? But then hopefully what I always love to explain to people is that their story is important and that their story should be heard and they should also want their story to be heard. I've learned to be more open and honest with people up front about why, why I'm there and why I think it's important to tell their story. I do think as, as I've gotten older and as I've gotten more mature in my storytelling and in, in my craft, I think that I've learned that the, the, subtle, the subtlety is like what connects more with people. And if you can really like hook someone with their emotions and, and make an emotional film rather than just like a popcorn film or, or something that's just visual, then they'll remember it longer. Because whenever I think of my favorite movies, I don't think of the ones that are the craziest with the biggest explosions. I think of, I think of ones that I really connect with emotionally, and it's often ones that have a message to say. I love, I love combining a message with, um, with the storytelling. When I imagined somebody who'd want to be in this field, I would imagine someone always wanting the the big effects, the big like right in your eyes film and you're going for the story straight for the heart and I really like that so um tell me about some of your favorite work that you've done through the years and branching from that some of your proudest accomplishments as well my favorite type of work is uh doing adventure photography and film 
I shoot a lot of skateboarding. I shoot a lot of mountain biking and skiing and hiking. Those are always the most fun projects to work on just because I'm so passionate about each of those things. Any Anything that gets me outside and gets me doing something adventurous or something I'm a little uncomfortable with, those are always what makes gives me the best experiences. One of my favorite projects I've ever worked on a few months ago, I completed it. It was a BMX track documentary in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And so that was one of my favorite projects to work on just because I thought BMX was a really cool thing. It was really visual and just the people there were awesome. The people at the track were amazing to work with. It was just really cool to see that little community built. What are your, some of your favorite accomplishments that you've got doing work within this field? Uh, yeah, so I would say my first major accomplishment in uh, film and photo was uh, whenever I won the Boone Film Festival. It was the first year they were having the film festival, and I actually was going to a different film festival. It was in Boone, but it was called the Banff Film Festival. Um, it's a really popular mountain film, adventure film festival, and they were advertising Boone Film Festival there. I was actually already starting to shoot a mountain biking documentary that I was wanting to uh, shoot just anyway, just with my friends to make something cool with them. I saw that they were advertising Boone Film Festival, and I was like, I was talking to the people I was working with, and I was like, I think this could really be something that we should try and shoot for. Like, we could we could make this uh, a film for the film festival. It'd be really cool just to enter, because I had never entered one before. At that time, I think I was 15 years old, and we shot all summer and uh, worked, edited for a few months after that. And it took a, it took a lot of work to finish, but we entered it in. And then the film festival was a few months later, and I actually ended up winning first place in that film festival. It was it was surreal to me because I had been doing this at that time, I guess like about seven or eight years. My work had never really been shown to anyone, but like my family and my other friends and friends from school, and I never got any, got any recognition for it. But whenever I entered the film festival and we ended up winning, it was just really cool to see it premiered with like a big audience. I think there was 500 people in the crowd that night and they called me up on stage and gave me my award and it was just it was really nerve-wracking going up there but it was awesome. It felt like a big payoff for all the work me and my friends had done uh, that summer. And after that I, I kept filmmaking and kept doing photography through high school and just learning about it, learning more and more about um, my craft. Um, trying to get better, and then I ended up um, choosing to go to the University of North Carolina for um, their journalism school. And so I am now a sophomore there, and last month I got a notification from my professor asking me to create a submission for the Hearst Awards. And if you don't know, the Hearst Awards is basically the biggest competition in college journalism. Your school has to ask you to do that, so it was already an honor to be asked to create a submission for. And the submission they asked me to create was for the Innovative Storytelling and Audience Engagement Competition. I had three biking films that I had done recently, so I decided to do it on bike riding in North Carolina. I had uh, one mountain biking film that was more focused on a trail builder. Um, and then one mountain biking film that was just like kind of an edit for, for that I had done with one of my riding friends. And then I had the BMX video. I also had a bunch of pictures on my hard drive that I thought would fit into the article. And uh, so I thought I could create a really good submission on bike riding in North Carolina. I put it all together on this page and submitted it. And then a few weeks later, I got the notification that I had won third place in the country for the Hearst Awards for that competition. So I would consider that my biggest accomplishment to date. It was just an honor to be considered for it and then a massive honor to win third place. I'm sure that a lot of people in your position have not had the success that you've had and that's something that you should be proud for and not take for granted. So where do you hope you are in five years and some future goals for yourself? Um, maybe like a plan you have or something you'd like to do? 
Yeah, so in five years, um, I'm really trying to play into this like adventure storytelling role. So I'd love to be working for a company or a brand uh, like North Face or Red Bull producing content for them or just any other company that has, has that kind of adventure focus because I would love to keep telling stories about skateboarding and mountain biking and just the outdoors. Whenever I tell those stories, I feel that I work harder and I'm more passionate about them just because it's something I care about outside of filmmaking and photography. I like doing these things, so I like talking about them and I like capturing them and documenting them because I love telling authentic stories where I'm just kind of like hands off letting letting things play out in front of me and capturing what's in front of me. I think it feels more authentic to do documentary style work. I could also see myself doing more work in the commercial field. Um, probably not, even though my major is technically journalism, I probably wouldn't want to work for a newspaper or anything just because um, I, I want to do projects that, that isn't related to daily news. I think news is a pretty stressful act, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully not working with the newspaper. And uh, I'm really interested in producing music videos. I think that would be really fun. I hope I'm able to collaborate with other people uh, that are like-minded in five years. I will say that I can't imagine myself doing anything other than what I'm doing right now. I think I would lose my mind if I was in any other field, just because this is what I care about and this is what I'm passionate about. This is what I've spent now more than half my life learning about. You know, whatever I do, I hope I have a camera in my hands. I hope I'm outside and I hope I'm talking to people and uh, collaborating with people, whether they're the people I'm doing stories on or, or other artists. My only objective in life is to leave this world a little better place than who I actually found it. My greatest fear in life is one of these days, all this will become a distant memory. The mountains, the reef, it's going to be a picture that we show our kids. They will tell them this is what we had. Well, to wrap it up here, I'd just like to ask you your thoughts on how do you see people within this field adapting to the recent issues of COVID-19 and um, how the field looks in the future when we're all back in, on our feet doing our normal routines? And So I'm, I'm hoping that this doesn't last past, past this year, um, kind of what's happening with the industry. Journalism is something that's really important right now because the people need to be informed about what's going on. It has made our jobs a lot harder um, because we can't be interacting with people. But I do think for in the short term, I do a lot of uh, wedding photography and wedding films as well. We've, I've already seen some weddings getting canceled. None of mine this year have been canceled yet, but I've seen other people canceling and people that have asked me, but I haven't been able to film canceling their weddings. I don't think I'll be able to get as much freelance work this year working with businesses. I do a lot of business promos, and I don't see that work happening this year. And I think this is universal. You know, I don't think I think everyone uh, who is in the industry is going to be feeling the effects of this, especially if they do freelance work. I'm mainly just hoping for this to be more short, short term. Well, uh, I appreciate you and your time that you gave me to answer all these questions, and I wish you nothing but the best during these crazy times. And until next time, listeners, key out.